had something to do with like z-scores and stuff. Remember the bell-shaped curve and the z-scores? I'm going to go over to 3.4. I'll put the page number down. So just some review here. Get your review questions. Always great when we can review. This is number 13, correct? Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right. This is on page 171. And we're going to look at this problem a few ways, Liz, so it's not confusing to it. First sentence. A highly selected boarding school only admits students who place at least 1.5 standard deviations above the mean on a standardized test. Hey, so now I'm making a mental picture here, Liz. I just heard standard deviations above the mean. I know that's for bell shape, so I'm just thinking, here's my image. There's a bell, one, two, three, and my image, I'm thinking, where is it? About right there, right? Mm -hmm. It's right here, that's, one standard that right there, Liz, is one standard deviation above the mean. Right there, and it, sometimes they write it like this in a step book. One of those, because that means standard deviations. That right there is two of those. And that right there is three of those. Well, this marking is at what? 1.5. 1.5 of these above the mean. So we're looking right there, okay. And then I keep reading this, so they say, all right, they're going to only let people in this, this boarding school, everyone, who are over here, right? We're not letting you all in. All right, <laughs> we get it, okay. So now, they said the mean was 200. The mean was 200. I'll put these down again. Where's the mean go? Well, the one on the left. Right there, and then when that's an X value, so I just want to put like mean at your X bar or your mu, you can think of that as your mu, the mean. And what's z equal to right here? z equals zero right there. Up at z. x 200, <coughs> z is zero right here. What's z equal to right there? One. And what's z equal to right here? Two. And we're looking for a z score of what? 1.5. That's what's going on here. But the x value is what? 200. Let me keep going. See, pictures help. I like making pictures when we're talking statistics. And then they say, in a standard deviation of 26. Well, that's one standard deviation above the mean, right, Liz? Yes. But what number would that be in terms of x? 226. So they go, the standard deviation was 26. I'm going to write that down. They said the standard deviation was 26. Which we all know, we go, what does standard deviation mean? On average, these students scored on average roughly about 26 away from the actual mean. Right on average. But these tick marks, that's a z-score of 1. That's a z-score of 2. That right there is a z-score of 1.5, 1.5 above the mean. But that would mean this first tick mark, the x value would be 226. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. If you want to, you want to get this one? What would that be? 226 plus another 26, 252. I'm not going over here because they didn't talk about over here, did they, Liz? So I don't feel like making all those numbers. But we could, couldn't we? You would just put a tear and subtract 26. I bet you it's got to be an answer. The answer to this question, let me get the question, everyone. They're asking about what's going on in the middle there. They go, what is the minimum score on this standardized test? These are standardized test scores. What's the minimum score needed to be accepted to the school? So, Liz, what's one way we can figure this out? I'm looking at it. It's got to be an answer between 226 and 252. It's smack dab in the middle there. That's going to be the score needed to get into that boarding school. Do you agree? So what's one way I could do it? I could think logically, well, what's the middle number between a what? 226 and 252, right? What was the distance from here to here? 26. So if I had to go a halfway of a 26 from a 226, what do you think the answer is going to be? I'm going to take that 226, but just go halfway. Which means I'm not going to add a full 26 to put me at the 252. I'll just add a what? 30. Does that make sense? <coughs> oh, good. And what's the answer then? 239. Now, we did this logically with a picture. I want to show you if you prefer algebra. You might go, no, can you just give me an algebra equation? So that's the answer. And that's the minimum score needed on that standardized test to get into that school. And I'm going to label it right here. What's going on right there? Right there, everyone. Z equals 1.5. But x is equal to 239. z equals 2, z equals 1, right in the middle, z equals 1.5. Minimum score. Now, 
I didn't do any algebra. But if you like algebra, I could have done, remember this equation? We could have just made it an algebra problem. That's what I could have done. So there's the equation. That's on the formula sheet. And you go, okay, I can just fill everything in. Remember this was 1.5? Mm -hmm. So if you like, if you, and when if you're an algebra lover, you could have, I'm not drawing a picture. I'm not drawing a picture. You just could have said, you're 1.5. You're my unknown. You're the 200. And you're the 26. If I don't know, Liz, do you like algebra? Then you'd have to solve that equation. See, I know. I'm like, I'm with you. You're like, we don't have to do algebra here. Multiply 26 on both sides. Add the 200. You could do that, though. Shouldn't that and be, just solve for x, right? Shouldn't that be x bar? Because you're doing a sample. It's a small school, not the whole population, right? I got you. In this problem, they weren't really clear about this. They just said a standardized. When I read standardized test, I'm oh, thinking, it's... oh, they're talking about some population. They're using this as an indication of measuring you know, populations of students. But you definitely could use x bar. So when I wrote it like this, Art saying, you know, if you prefer, you can look at the problem like that if you want. Look at it as an S and X part. That was great, Liz. I love it. I like pictures. So we just go, oh, it's in between these. Oh, you just gotta add a 13. Figure out what it is. That was good. Hey, um I got a You got a question for the review, Art? Yeah. <clears throat> Are you doing the algebra or? Oh no, unless yes. someone needs me to. Did someone need me to algebra? No, you just take from 4.6 and multiply it, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You sure you don't want me to do it? No. Okay, yeah. you're right. You know how to do You go, I multiply 26 on both sides. And then you subtract the two. There you go. Add the 200, sorry. Do you like that? I mean, that would be another way to work the problem, right? Algebraically. It was because like, when I did it, like I was talking about this earlier, when I did it, I, I just kind of went blank. And then I was like, okay, wait, now it makes sense for the ball. Cool. Outstanding. Hey, uh, it's funny in stats too. These pictures, you make these little bell shapes, sometimes it really helps. You start labeling things, you can figure out, oh, this is what I need to find. Find out what's going on. Go ahead, Art. Okay, 4.2, number 15C. All right, I'm on 14, 2, 15C. I'll flip there. Now, this was dealing with regression. <coughs> we go in here in 15C. They do one of these, would it be a good idea to use this model? So everyone, let me put down the model equation from number 15 from page 216. So they gave this to you in this problem. They said y hat equal a 3.4, 722. Awesome. They're going out five decimal places, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, for the test, go out how many at least? Three, yes. I'll be fine. All right. And then minus 0.62. 94. All right. Well, what the heck was that? Some wine this problem? Uh, they're talking about baseball here, money ball. Uh, what was the X variable? Winning percentage Y on base percentage X. All right. So I'm just going to label this X and Y. X was the on base percentage. And the Y variable was the season's winning percentage. <laughs> Bless you. Hey, I guess maybe there would be a real a straight line relationship between that. Do you agree, everyone, in baseball? Probably the more times you get on base, the more likelihood you would to be winning the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe there is a linear relationship. Someone was looking at this. They looked at a lot of data, and this is what they're coming up with. But Art said, he just wanted to ask about letter C. He gets down to letter C, and he goes, would it be a good idea to use this model to predict the winning percentage of a team whose on-base percentage <coughs> was 0.25L? All right, so let me write that out. Would it be a good idea? And you and I are going to say yes or no. To use the model to make a prediction for an on base percentage. On base percent of. 
Now, the only way we can answer this, don't you and I have to have knowledge of the original X column? Mm -hmm. What's great is that we all know what to do. We look in this column to see as long as that number is what? In the scope. In the scope. Do you agree? If it's inside the scope of all these numbers, we're going to say, yeah, it's okay. But if it's outside, we're going to say no. Um, I'm looking at this. Do they have information on this? this Somewhere in the problem, they got to give us some indication of this. Did they say it? It's on B, letter B. It says letter B. Ah, so I'm going to read letter B. And letter B, Art, they go, the oh. lowest was 0.298. So I'm just going to make some notes over here. The lowest on base was 0.298. And what was the highest? 0.350. The highest in this table, so we don't have to list all these. They just said the highest was 0.350. All right, that's going to help us answer the question. But we needed that information, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't have that. We'd be like, we can't answer this. <coughs> they said the lowest value in this left column was 0.298. The highest was 0.350. Is that number between those? No. Sorry. All right. The answer? <laughs> no! <laughs> Bad idea, right? Bad idea. And why? Explain why it's not inside the scope of data. Or you could say this. Extrapolation is dangerous. dangerous yeah. It really is in stats. People do it all the time, though. They do. Talk about it. Well, we saw this. So this is what's going to happen. Are you sure? Think that straight line is going to continue? It's not going to curve a little bit, <laughs> right? It's outside the scope of data. That was a good one. Hey, uh, just a few minutes left before you get out of here. What other questions in our view? Anything from what we did? Oh, go ahead. Um, can we go back over the um, like the box plots when we first You bet. Now with box plots, I love this. We're in the class with this box <coughs> plots. Let's talk about that calculator. We can review that. How about that? A box plot on the calculator. I'm going to hit the lights. Because you might want to use a technology to do this. To build your box plot, everyone. I do it on my calculator. The first thing is, I'm looking at stat edit. For a box plot, that's one variable. That will be one variable stat. So only have everything in what? One column. So that's the first thing. Does that make sense? Now we were just doing two columns, bivariate data. You would have everything like in your L1, right? <coughs> You'd have everything over here, right? Well, I saved those numbers from before. Do you remember all these L3s? Remember all these? So what I'm going to do is just so I can show this to the class. I want to see all the numbers in L3. Do you remember these? These were the times of those 60 to 64-year-old people. They ran a 5K. They had all these times. Wasn't there a slow poke in here? Mm -hmm. Where was he? There he was. Is that him? No, there he is. 54 minutes to run the 5K, but he's like 64 years old, a lot faster now than I was, I admitted. So I'm just, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to review how to put on a calculator. So I get, notice I get everything in L3. I would go stat, cal, <coughs> but I'm not doing number four. Right? I just want to see the one variable stats on this. I'll just do number one. Now, if you had everything in L1, you can just sit on it, right? But since I have everything in L3, right now in my calculator, I'm going to write second three. That gives me the L3 there. So that's why I'm putting that there. And uh, this gives me all the one variable stats. You could build your box plot with this. But remember, I can hit the down arrow. I can hit down arrow, and you can see, oh, there's the, the five number summary, right? And you can build it. But if you want to make your box plot with technology, I've got to go back to stat plot. Hit enter. Now, which one looks like the box plot? Which one? Oh, go ahead, Liz. Sorry, was the question just how to, how to make the, the box plot? Oh, yeah. And if you, if, you, if you want to be more clear, I'll be glad to go over anything. I just, she was like, just wanted to review it. Oh. And I hope I'm answering all our questions. We can even do some math on the board. We can talk about outliers. I just thought about, like, if anybody wanted to make the image, you could just go in here. I could go down to that one. Now, when I hit enter, watch this. Watch how that'll change. I'm going to hit enter. The calculator knows that. So we're going to read L1. And then you would add but where was my data? L3. So just, you'd probably put it all in L1, right? But I just wanted, I'd just go down here and go, hey, calculator, it's really an L3. And then I always said zoom what? Nine. Zoom nine is zoom stat. 
and you can look at this if you wanted to. But hey, if you got locked up during a test doing this, couldn't you build that thing by hand with all those numbers in the one verbal set? A lot of students do that. So we should talk about, before you leave, we should talk about that outlier thing. Remember the fences? So there it is. How do I get the numbers? Trace. How do I get that? Trace, hit trace. I can look at all the numbers. Are there any outliers in here? Yeah. That 54%. Why is it an outlier? Well, it's because it's above the fence line. Fence. So how about we end class? Only take a second here. I'm going to pick a problem from the book. Just to review box plots. You ready? This is really from the, it's one of the problems in the book. So I don't know if you got a chance to do this one, but it's pretty good. And when I'm in 3.4, and I'm going to do, this only take a second. Page 171, 17C. All right, last problem. Page 171. This is number 17, we're only going to do C. Now here's what they've got. Q1, 255.3. Q2, isn't Q2 the median? Mm -hmm. So I mean, if you want to call that the median, you can. 335.5. And the Q3, that's the upper quartile, 497.2. All right. Oh, this will be real quick, too. This is if you're doing things by hand, we can do all this. All right, that's all they gave us. And they're like, what is this? <coughs> all right, these were violent crimes, including rape, robbery, assault, and homicide. It's a sum of the environment per 100,000 populations for all 50 states and D.C. Well, they came up with a number, everyone, and here it is. 1,345.9, it would be per 100,000 people. These are the violent crimes per 100,000 people. The question is, is that an outlier? So is this right here an outlier? So if you're curious, you're like, what does this mean? They're saying 1,245 people per 100,000 people. There's violence.